So the idea here is that we are going to collect data from different online sources and get it into uh, QGIS. So with this button, I can go to the next page. And the first step is to download data from the Africa Groundwater Atlas country hydrogeology, hydrogeology maps. And that's on this uh, website. So here we have the site. And the first step is to download the data for Malawi that we will use in this uh, tutorial. So I click here on, uh, on Malawi and then it will ask to fill in a form. And when you have filled that in and submitted, it will immediately give you a link to download and send it also to you by, uh, by email. So that's, uh, that's what you can do. I already did that. So I'm going to proceed with uh, the next uh, step. Okay, so we are going to, we have downloaded this data. It's a zip file on your hard disk and we extract it. And uh, then we are going to start uh, QGIS. So here I have a, a brand new installation of uh, QGIS for this uh, session. And uh, I have downloaded the files from uh, Malawi. They're here, they're these ones. And it comes with some metadata, which is important. So always uh, check what comes with it. So you have some more information about uh, the data. Like in this PDF file, uh, we can see what the attributes are. So there's attributes about geology and about hydrogeology in the file. So we uh, need that for our interpretation, but also to assign the right uh, styling. So we're in uh, QGIS here. Uh, I use here QGIS uh, 3.10 uh, long-term release. And it's a, it's a fresh blank uh, project. And the first thing I always do, if, if you work on a small laptop, you just drag your layers panel over the browser panel. So you have the two tabs here. You can easily uh, switch. And now I go to the, I'm in the browser panel and I'm going to look for the files that we downloaded. So for me, they're on the Z drive and I've put them in tutorial one. And I'm going to access that folder a lot. So I click right and I add it as a favorite. So now I don't need to go down all this whole tree, but I simply find the tools here under tutorial one. And I can now simply drag the shapefile, we recognize that this is a shapefile. Let's see the other files, pdf.txt doesn't look like that's a GIS layer. This, this other one, risk comes later in the tutorial. I pre-downloaded it to avoid some risks. So simply the first thing that you do is drag this to the map canvas and there it uh, opens. And I switch back to the layers panel. And now I'm going to look at the attribute table of this layer, I click right and I go to open attribute table. And there we see two columns, one with the geology and one with the hydrogeology coded according to what is given in that uh, PDF file with metadata, good practice that they apply to, to share this. So that's nice. So we can now um, simply apply uh, styling to this. Uh, and let's uh, make a styling for the geology and the hydrogeology separately uh, based on this one file and the attributes. So I open the layer styling panel using this button. You get this panel to the right. You can always read which layer you are styling. And in this case, it's not a single symbol, but it's uh, categorized for different classes of geology. And now I need to choose the column in the attribute table that I want to style and is this one, the geology, GLG. And if I click classify, it will be classified with random colors. And it always adds this last one, all other values. And uh, that is for the no data that's in the layer. I'm going to remove that. You can often remove it if you don't have no data. And uh, it simply adds this legend. And you can change the colors by simple double clicking here on a color and changing the fill color to another one that you uh, that you want for that. 
Here I'm just keeping it uh, as random colors, but you can of course make this uh, more to look like a, a real geological map according to conventions that you have in your country for geological mapping. Now I also want to style uh, the hydrogeology, but to distinguish, um, I'm first going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to rename this one to um, geology. And I'm going to rename the other one to hydrogeology. But it's still showing the geology, of course. I'm going to style the second one in the same way. So I now have here the hydrogeology, make sure that's there, categorized. And I'm going to use the other attribute table column, the field related to the hydrogeology, and I click classify, it will warn me that it will delete what's there already. And now I have the classes from the hydrogeology added. It's the same shape file, but we use the different fields in the attribute table to style different properties. I remove here also all other values. So that was the first step. And uh, let me save uh, the project. It's a uh, good practice to save it frequently because if uh, QGIS crashes, and that can also happen to me, then you can still open the project file. In this case, I don't save it to a geo package, but just as a normal QGIS file, and I'll save it to the tutorial one folder that I made. So everything is together in one folder. Note that I don't use spaces and I saved it to my uh, data partition. And uh, I'm going to call this simply Malawi. A .qgz file that stores the links to these layers and the styling and the zoom level. Let's go to the next step. And there I'm going to add data from a spatial data infrastructure. And it's a great thing that Malawi has the Malawi spatial data uh, platform. And I'm going to, uh, to show you. Um, so here it is. And uh, there I'm going to look for groundwater data. So this is an SDI, a spatial data infrastructure, uh, which also runs on the GeoNode. And you can simply use this uh, search box and look for groundwater to find all the groundwater related data and then press enter. And there we find this layer, groundwater monitoring wells coordinates and uh, comes with some uh, information here. But if I click on that, then I can see uh, visualization of the data it will load and I can see uh, the metadata and I can check the attributes here. So it comes with these different attributes. And if I want to download it, I can click here, download as an image or as a zipped shape file. But here I'm going to do other things. See, it's still loading. There's an issue with the internet, but that's uh, not a big problem for us now. So I'm going to QGIS and I'm going to make a connection with this uh, data set. So there is this button here, and this is to open the data source manager. Here's the data source manager, and you will find this button GeoNode here. And there I can make new connections to GeoNode SDIs. I'm gonna make a new connection. I click on new and I give the name must up and I'm going to give the URL here and that's the main URL of the, the GeoNote. So that's this link. You could also copy it from the browser. That's safer than, uh, than what I do now. And um, 
then you're going to test the connection. You don't uh, normally need to fill in the other things. You're going to test the connection. It will take a bit. It will try to connect to the server. Here we have a lot of overhead because also Zoom is uh, interfering, but uh, it says that the connection was successful and it's a valid GeoNode instance. So that's good news. So this seems to be working. And then we click OK. And now what we can do is connect to Mustap here. It will also take a bit. And here it will load all the layers that are on this uh, Geonode. And let me filter now by typing groundwater. And there you see it. And it gives you the title of the layer, the name, how it's stored in the, in the database. And here you see web service WMS, remember, that's a rendered picture. And WFS, that is the vector data that we can use for further processing. And that's, of course, what we need. So I select the WFS and I click add and it will download these points into QGIS. That takes a bit. When the layer is loaded, we close the dialog and I can drag the GeoNode layer to the top and there we see all the points. We click right on the layer, we can export these features now as a shapefile to make it available as a local GIS file. Let's call it groundwater monitoring wells. You also change the projection. You can also change the projection directly to the UTM zone. Click OK. And there it is. And now we can remove the GeoNode layer. So basically what we did until now was uh, downloading the Malawi uh, hydrogeology uh, map and adding the GeoNode layer on groundwater monitoring wells from MASDAP from the GeoNode and converting this then to a local shapefile because you cannot keep it in WFS format for further processing. Now the next step is we are going to use um, a CSV file from, uh, from the Ram Ramsar uh, information service. So on this website, we have all the Ramsar sites. And we can find these uh, Ramsar sites also for uh, Malawi. And therefore, we use these uh, explore by filters. Let's first go to Africa. And then we choose here Malawi. And there it loads and we see that it has two Ramsar sites here. And if you then go to exports, then you can choose here different formats. And what is useful for us in GIS is to save it as a CSV format. And you fill in your email address and you will receive the link by email. I've already downloaded it. So I'm going to use that link. And um, to show you the file. So it's this file, the CSV file. And if I click right, I can do edit and it will open in Notepad. And it is good practice to open it first in a text file because then you can already see what is in the data. And we see that it is comma separated. If you see these double quotes, it means that these are text fields. Uh, and what we can also see is that it has latitude and longitude coordinates, so we can plot it on a map. And it has a lot of other fields. So uh, let's open this in, uh, in QGIS. Therefore, we use again the data source manager. And now I go to delimited text and I use this button. This button is important. We use this always to browse in the file system. Also for saving, always use that. Don't type the file name. And here there's this uh, CSV file and I open it. It gives me a preview and it already looks quite okay, but let's check what it did. So CSV, if you want to change the delimiters here, it chooses comma separate values. You can go to custom delimiters and you can choose something else. Here we just use the comma and always check the preview because uh, that gives you an indication on how uh, good it is. And here we see the latitude, longitude, coordinate so that looks well so 
the only thing I need to do here is go to geometry definition. It has some guessing, so it automatically guesses that X is longitude field and Y is the latitude field, so it's already selected. But we need to add here the geometry. And the geometry here can be selected with this button. And because it's latitude longitude and we don't have any other information, we use EPSG 4326 and you can type it here in the filter field. And there it is. And I click OK. And that's all that we need now. So I click add and I click close and we see that the two points have been added here into our layers list. So that is still um, an important CSV file. And for further processing, we need to export it to a real GIS uh, layer. So I'm going to export this also to a shapefile. To do that, click right, choose export, and choose save features as. Default, it will choose a geo package, but later we will wrap everything into one geo package. So I first save it as a shapefile. Use this button again to browse to the folder. And it's on Z tutorial one. And there I'm going to save it as Ramsar Sites Malawi. And the great thing about this export tool is that we can also change the projection to the one that we will use later in our project. And it's uh, not advised to keep it on latitude longitude. So I'm going to change it to the UTM projection for Malawi. And you can uh, look that up, but I have the code here. 32 is always UTM WGS84. Seven is for South. And then you type the zone number. And in this case, it's 36. So select it here and you can look here at the preview and you see that it covers uh, the whole country of Malawi. So make sure it's selected then click OK. And that will be our output projection stored in the shape file. And leave everything else as default. And then I do OK. And now the Ramsar Sites Malawi layer is added. And I can remove the CSV file. So good practice is also to keep this layers list clean, to not get confused and use the wrong layers in your calculation. So do OK. Now, if I hover my mouse over it, I see where it's stored. It's a shape file and I see the projection in brackets. It's EPSG 32736. So that's correct. So always use that if you get confused what file you're looking at. Okay, now we need to uh, style it. So I click on the, uh, the layers panel. If it was closed, it's still open. And it already selected here, Ramsar Sites Malawi. And I just want a single symbol for, uh, for both of these. And I'm going to change it to a SVG marker. So click here on simple marker and there you can change the type of markers. And one of those here is SVG marker. SVGs are, are uh, icons in drawings that you can make yourself or download from the internet. And QGIS also comes with these. And if you scroll down, then you will find here the different uh, options. And under symbol, you'll find here the one that we are going to use, and that is this uh, red marker. But it's very small now, so we need to increase its size and we change it to 12. And now you see it here on the map. These are nice marker symbols with a little shadow. So that looks uh, great. So we already have some more data now in our project. So uh, let's add some more. And uh, now we're going to the SADC GIP uh, portal, the SADC GIP. And um, let's see where it opened. So here it is. And uh, let's also look for groundwater data there. It's probably full of groundwater data, but 
yeah, let's see what we have there. And there's, um, of course, many of these layers. The ones that uh, we are going to use are the aquifers, the transboundary aquifers. When I start searching, I already see it here in the pop-up and that's actually the one that we need. I'm gonna click on that. And uh, similar to the other um, MustDAP uh, GeoNode, we can click on the layer name. Here they've used better practice because we see no underscores and file name in the title. It's a more nice human readable title. And we can read the metadata nicely filled in. Look at the attributes. It has the names of the aquifers, the countries that it covers. And um, you can download it. But here, of course, we're gonna make a connection. Hopefully uh, in this case, it will uh, work. So I'm just gonna copy the link from the Sadek GIP. And I'm going to make a new uh, connection. You could do it in this way as we did, but there's another way. So I'll show you both ways, they're equivalent. You can also go to the browser panel. And if you go completely down, you find here GeoNode. And you see here our, our MassDAP connection is already there. But I can also add a new one. If I click right, I can choose new connection. And I'm gonna give it a new name, Sadek GIP. I paste the URL, I'm going to test the connection. Let's see if this works a little bit better. It seems to be a little bit faster. It was uh, successful. Okay. And now you can expand these boxes and it will query all the layers that we have on the SADC GIP. That will of course take a little bit. So there are two ways to connect to the geo nodes, either using this button or going to your browser panel and under your node, add the connection. It has the same uh, dialogs and we want the WFS. So I expand WFS to get all the WFS layers. And here it is, the transboundary aquifers of the world. And I'm going to drag it to the map canvas. And this time we see it works. So these are all the aquifers of the world, but I'm still zoomed into uh, to Malawi. So of course we're gonna do something with that. Um, let me see what the next step is. Yeah, we need to export this also to a local uh, layer. So this is, if you hover your mouse over it, you can see the projection is BPSG4326 and it is a GeoNode link, a WFS. So I'm gonna click right, export, save features as, and I'm going to save it as an SV shape file in our tutorial one folder. And I'm going to save it as, uh, let's see what name in the tutorial, aquifer, aquifers shape file, save. And I'm going to change the projection also to the one of the other layer, the UTM zone, and then add it to folder. Okay, it's now converting the whole file. So all the polygons will be now put in the shape file and there it is. And I can remove the other one, which is simply now a copy and I can uh, style it. Let's give it a simple outline. So I go to simple fill, simple line, and now I have those aquifers as uh, black lines here. So data set is getting uh, more complete. Now we have all the data, we need to save it into a geo package, including the project styling and the correct uh, projection. So that's what we're going to do now. So go to the processing toolbox, you can open it here from the menu, Processing Toolbox. There we see it. And um, there's a nice tool to package all these layers. You've seen it in the presentation. Search for package and you find here the package layers tool. Um, make sure that all the things that you want to export are, are checked there, that all might be necessary. I'm not sure, but I'll just check them. And I double click on package layers. And in the dialog, I click for input layers on these this button with the three dots. 
And here I'm going to simply select all these layers. I click select all, so all the five layers are selected. In brackets, you see there are different projections. We're going to uh, solve that later. Now it will, in a geo package, you can store layers with different projections. So it doesn't disturb this process of uh, storing all your data into one geo package. So I do OK. I also want to save the styles that we assigned and then save to file, geo package, and go to your tutorial folder. So always make sure that it ends up in the right place. And I'm going to call this one, let's stick to how we call it in the uh, tutorial, Malawi underscore GIS underscore data. Note that I use underscores instead of spaces as the good practice for file and folder names. I save and then I run it. And now all the five layers are in a geo package. I close it. And uh, the next step is that we are also going to save the project in the geo package. Note that it doesn't add the geo package layers here automatically and that these layers here are still the shapefiles. So we need to do something about it. So what we're going to do is uh, I can save this project in the QGZ file, just to be sure. And I can click this button to open a new project. So this is a new blank project. And I'm going to add now the layers from the geo package that we made. So I go back to our favorites here. And this is our new geo package that we just created. And there we see the five layers. I select them all and I drag them to the map canvas. And it zooms to the maximum boundary. And in this projection, it looks uh, weird because it also takes the first layer and uses that projection. So it's automatically changes, changed. You can find it here in the lower right to the UTM uh, projection. Now I want to zoom to the boundary of Malawi. And I know that this geology and hydrogeology maps are the boundaries of Malawi. So I click right and I choose zoom to layer. And there we are back in Malawi. And let's drag groundwater monitoring wells on top and the Ramsar sites. There it is. Let's put the aquifers below. And uh, here we have all our layers from the geo package. And now we're going to save even the project in the geo package. So we have one file that we can share with our colleagues. So you go to project and do save to geo package. And then we browse to the newly created geo package in the tutorial one folder in my case. It's open and we give it an output name, Malawi groundwater project. And then I do save. You can save multiple projects into one geo package. So these are now portable geo packages that you can share uh, with others.